Hey there friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Alderon and I are here today to talk to you about a book that we absolutely love. It took us by surprise, haven't really known or heard anything about this author before. I don't actually even think I've read anything by her before. Um, I just kind of came across it for very trite, shallow reasons, and then decided that I really wanted to read it, and then once I did, totally fell in love with it and it took me completely by surprise which I love I love a feeling when a book does that so the book I'm talking about is the only survivors by Megan Miranda the only survivors now the thing that drew me to it I said was kind of a shallow and trite reason which for me is always a good cover I am obsessed with covers um i know the old saying is you don't judge a book by its cover but i firmly believe that that's only supposed to be about people and not actual books because sometimes covers are just amazing so look at this one for example the colors of it are just stunning they're absolutely stunning plus there's this like menace too with this house you know kind of framed like this and nothing around it you can't see any people and it's just it's it's really haunting but fantastic so this is a thriller. It's a th thriller and a mystery. I always feel like there's a line between those two that sometimes can blur together. I know there's like very specific characteristics that, that, um, that categorize a mystery versus a thriller. Um, and if you're going to be very specific and only look at those, then yes, this is p basically a thriller. Um, but I feel like there are so many mysterious aspects to it it's going to propel you through this book. So like I said, I had never, I don't believe I've read anything by Megan Miranda before, um, but I really do love a good thriller, uh, particularly when the weather's starting to get warm. I can go outside and sit and read on my balcony uh, at my apartment, and I absolutely love that. For some reason, for me, this warm weather, once spring and summer hits, just really, really is just perfect thriller weather, in my opinion. So what is this book about? Why did it take me so completely by surprise? Um, I'm Well, you never know when you're getting into a thriller um, how good it's going to be, right? Like there, some of them, they started to really just pop up like mushrooms after a rain. Um, after I think it was, you know, really Gone Girl was the one that just completely um, greased the springs for people wanting to write thrillers and read thrillers. Um, the Woman in Cabin 10. There's just so many, you know, really great thrillers out there, but there's also a lot that are not the best. Um, and you read them and you're just like, eh, pretty forgettable. Um, this one I'm going to remember for quite a long time because for, well, for a lot of reasons. So this is about a woman named Cassidy who was involved when she was a high school in a really, really horrific accident. So her and a bunch of students and two teachers were going on this trip in these two vans in Tennessee, there's a bad accident. The vans are both propelled into this ravine and everybody dies except for nine students. So the teachers die, the rest of their classmates die. Everybody dies except for nine of them. So they're in high school. So obviously this is a really terrible thing to have happened. I mean, to anybody really, but especially a young person. So then a year after that, one of the survivors has committed suicide. So after this, the remaining eight are like, you know what, we have to get together every year and spend the anniversary of this time together to make sure that we're all okay, to hold us all accountable, you know, for our feelings and stuff, and just to make sure nothing like this happens again with the suicide and stuff. So for the following years now, with Cassie being an adult, every year they gather at the Outer Banks, um, which is... Um, North Carolina, off the coast of North Carolina, and they rent this house, and they basically just, you know, stay there and are there for each other, and they've done this for years now. Well, now it's coming on to the 10th anniversary um, of the accident, and Cassidy doesn't, she's ready to distance herself from this. She's like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this anymore. My life is on track. She's got this boyfriend that's really great, and she just, you know, her life is fine. She doesn't need this anymore. So she changes her number, she doesn't reach back out to anybody, but then when it's getting really close to the date of the anniversary, she receives this text with an obituary attached and another one of the survivors is dead. So Cassie now feels that she is forced to go to the Outer Banks again for this anniversary um, to deal with this. So it's only seven of them now, but when she's there, it doesn't feel like it normally does. Um, there's a lot of tension under underneath everybody. Um, one of the other survivors ends up wandering away like the first night they're there and hasn't come back. 
Um, everybody's acting kind of sketchy and weird. And Cassidy realizes that there are a lot of secrets that are tied up with this event that she never knew about before. And it means confronting the past. Um, whether or not that means she's going to be put in danger, she's not sure. So what did I like about this book? So this book is is not for, for you if you do not like a lot of points of view. So, or time different timelines so the book primarily is told through Cassidy's point of view currently what is going on as it co as it is happening but also you're getting the point of view of, as a flashback from all of the different survivors of the night and what they remember um so that I thought was so so interesting because the survivors in present time do not talk about the accident, really. They they can comfort each other and be there for each other, but they do not talk about what happened. So nobody is really all on the same page as to what happened to this accident other than what they all talked about the night it happened. So, you know, you never really know what to believe because, you know, as is in real life, everybody's perspective and everybody's memory of things are, is always going to be super different. So if you have an event happen and you put a couple people in that event and then you ask them afterwards what happened, it's going to be a very different story from both of them because it's going to be filtered through their emotions, their own personal experiences, um, and things like that. So that is the case here too. So you're hearing about what happened through all these different people's points of view and it's just so fascinating. Um, it's also really intense and thrilling because you're trying to figure out where this now missing um, survivor has gone who's wandered away. And I forgot to mention there's a huge storm coming, so they can't even leave the island now. Um, I also really like this because um, I used to vacation at the Outer Banks, and I love it, love it, love it. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, it's just such a perfect, perfect place to go. Um, but it is very isolating, which is part of why I liked it. So when there's a storm um, and the roads flood, you are very, very alone out there. Um, and it, it, this book really completely encapsulated that feeling totally. Um, the other thing about it that I thought was fantastic is that there's not one, but there's two huge twists in this story. Two of them. Oh my gosh. I didn't see either of them coming. I... You know, as you know, as I've said before with, with thrillers and mysteries, I am really bad, really, really bad at figuring out the endings of mysteries or thrillers. I just, I suck at it. I'm so terrible. I can never figure out what's happening. Um, but that's the fun of it, right? So I was, you know, I had like a little chart going. I'm like, all right, it could be this person, you know, that's, that's causing problems. It's suspicious. And, you know, maybe, you know, this person did something and I was completely wrong so wrong in the best way. Like once that first twist hit, I was like, oh, this is so satisfying. But then very, very, very near the end, the second even bigger twist hits. And that is like a light going on. So that twist I didn't see coming, but it also completely made the entire book fit into like pl like play into place like it was the last piece of a puzzle going together oh my gosh it was so satisfying and so cool and I was like what you've got to be kidding me I would have never in a million years seen that coming and I don't think it was just me I think it was really just very good twists so if you're looking for something new if you're looking for a good thriller or a mystery or something to just keep your attention, um, really got to try this one. It's so, so, so good. Maybe go read it outside now that the weather's getting nice. Um, but this book was just, it was such a delight. I, like I said, I tore through it. I could not stop reading um, because it was just absolutely amazing. The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. Well, that's what we've got for you guys today. I hope that this um, video was, oh, that this book sounded really interesting and that you liked the video. If so, please feel free to give it a like. I really appreciate you watching and you can come and check this book out from Farmington Community Library. Thanks so much friends and have a wonderful rest of the day.